This is Liam Neeson. You know me from a bunch of action movies where I shoot people. And I'm really badass. But the best movie I ever did was Love Actually. Thinking about that movie right now is making me weep like a little baby. What also makes me weep is knowing that Mike's Daily Podcast, which is just completely independently created and produced, has to fight against podcasts that are more popular, that are produced by big corporations and networks, and some even lifted right off of radio stations. I'm looking square at you, ESPN and NPR, and other things that have a bunch of letters. Do you know that big-name podcast players like iTunes and Stitcher show only podcasts that pay for advertising, or who have big names on them, from TV and film? Yes, I am such a person. Please do what you can to support... Those guys that drive carriages around New York with the horses and everything, they treat those horses really well. And support independent podcasters like Mike Matthews. Here's his show now, Mike Steely Podcast. This show is clean, pretty much. Mike's Daily Podcast. God only knows where I'd be without you, Liam Neeson. Episode 822. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, the finale of my intern interview with the San Francisco band Great Highway. Plus, we hear from Vanita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, and Procter & Gamble, that huge company that used to have a satanic logo. Mike's daily podcast they want to sell off some of their big brand names i want to buy a bounty so i can be the quicker picker upper when i walk my dog don't you know mike's daily podcast and on the last show floyd the floor man and john Deere, the engineer tried to get me to rip off my shirt but i declined people that like my bare torso have a taste that's refined that's all that started that all got started by the marvel superhero films Having their male stars show off their huge pecs that stand still. And that's about what we're doing here. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because I'm asking myself, what am I doing here? It's a beautiful day outside here in California, the Bay Area. It's so nice. Mike's On a Saturday. Daily what am I doing in here? Podcast. There's no windows in the last place on Earth. Yeah. So how did... Oh, wow, there is a window. And it's broken. And I have to pay for that. Damn, that's another one of the big bills I have to pay for. Look, they just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi, y'all. How do it? And it's a disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? You, you know what, Mike? I think that you have money to pay for a broken window. Because didn't you get an economic stimulus? Because of the gas prices dropping? Yeah, but they're going back up again. So, you know, yeah, we had a big economic stimulus, what, when Bush was president, he tried to get the economy going, and then uh, the gas companies, not by any fault of their own, decided that uh, gas prices needed to go down, so that helped us out. But there's another type of stimulus I found interesting. Look, Walsh just walked in. Hi, Mike. I make the Rippy. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, I can't wait to try your root beer. Yeah. We always do this banter back and forth. It's a back and forth banter. That's why I made back and forth banter. Uh, it's been awesome. Oh, wow. That's an interesting looking root beer. It looks good. It's artisanal. You made it. So, mmm. I'm drinking it through a straw. Very nice. It's good. It's robust. I like it. Are there coffee grounds in it? Yeah, sure. Um, there wouldn't be like avocado peels in there, would there? Yeah, okay. Did you take whatever was in my compost bin and just put it in your root beer? Whatever, ha! Ah, Brewmaster. He makes me so angry! (laughs) Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> You're all dead now, right? No, that's mean. They're probably still alive. Hey! I hope they are. Hey! I found out something interesting. I like the TV show Marin. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? It's about a guy that does podcasts and he constantly gets criticized by people. What? You do a podcast? What's that? You don't make any money, do you? Oh, I love it. I'm just, I'm hooked. It's on Netflix now and I'm, I'm checking them out. Andy Kindler was on, he's one of my favorite comedians. He is so funny. Uh, I actually interviewed a guy who worked on a podcast that interviewed Andy Kindler. So I feel like I've interviewed Andy Kindler, but I haven't. How about that Liam Neeson at the beginning of the show? Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. This is, this is a, a very well-produced podcast, so you should vote for it for the podcast awards. That link you can find at mikesdailypodcast.com or just go to podcast awards and uh dot com and and vote for us for uh best produced category that'd be very nice of you um economic stimulus that's right we were talking about stimulus stimuli mark don't say that word that sounds dirty stimuli okay it's dirty now why would you say that Mark, everything's dirty to him since I forced him to go see Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, it was the biggest movie of the weekend last weekend. So what'd you think of it, Brewmaster? I mean, disgruntled fiddle player. What? What? Who are you talking to? We're both standing here. Uh, how about you, Brewmaster? I saw it and I was stimulated. Okay. And how about you, disgruntled fiddle player? Ditto. And I also say that because I'm a fan of Rush Limbaugh. Okay. Well, you know what? I think what we learned today is that uh, what we did get an, a different type of stimulus over the years, and nobody realized it. Nobody's pointed it out until this moment. And that is we got space stimulus. <laughs> That's right. Who broke another window? I didn't know we had another window. Why? Did, who broke that? Sorry, Mark, that was a disgruntled fiddle player running home real quick, and he needed a quick out, so he went through a window here at the last place on Earth! Why do you have to go home? Because he heard I was going to reenact some of the scenes from Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, okay. I gotta go, bye, oh, bye, how much are blindfolds? Yes, we got a space stimulus because TV manufacturers made flat screens... And computer screen manufacturers made flat screens. So now we've got more space. Remember how big those computer monitors and TV tube sets were? Huge. And now you see them on every single street corner. On every street, there's somebody is putting out there an old big TV set. That means that everyone has a TV set now because you can get them for free. If you didn't have a TV set before... There's one sitting on the street. You can get that. Yeah, it's a really freaking heavy, and it's huge. It'll take up your entire house, but you can watch TV. Isn't that great? Yay. Only if you're watching great TV shows, though, because, like, I found on Netflix some interesting shows. I don't know if you're a big fan of Anthony Bourdain, the cook. He's actually done an intro to this show. He's an author, chef. You've seen him. He does the show, well, he does No Reservations, which is also the name of his book, but he does a show called Parts Unknown for CNN. And I watched this one. It was interesting because he's so honest. He has such candor. And he talks about how the he was in Sicily and he was trying to do a show where he's going out on a boat and there's a cook who supposedly dives and gets his own octopus and cuttlefish and they they go in the water Anthony Bourdain's got his snorkel on and he says this on the show he's like suddenly I realize that the cook has got this backup guy throwing already dead cuttlefish into the water so that he's already got fish to find for the cameras so it won't be like he'll go fishing and there's nothing there and Anthony Bourdain is so upset by this he like shuts down 
He doesn't talk at all. They basically you don't see him the rest of this particular scene with this cook, uh, except for later in the evening where he tells the people watching the show. By this point, I have been sitting at a cafe drinking nonstop. I am completely drunk. I don't remember any of this scene where I'm talking to the cook uh, in the evening and he's making and preparing all these fabulous dishes. And he says, I'm completely drunk because he has realized that his show is a farce. Like there's people doing fake things and he, he, because of the producers or whatever, he can't acknowledge that all this fakery is going on. And he's just having a crisis of the soul. And then I watched another episode he did where he's in Quebec. And then you have never seen Anthony Bourdain so happy because he's hanging out with these cooks in Canada that are so good. And like they'll go on a little outing like they're in one of those little shacks on a frozen lake and they're doing fishing. And he mentions the fact that the producer threw a, a, a dead fish already on the line. So when they're pulling up a fish out of the that, that they actually have a fish to show it's all staged and he and anthony again acknowledges it and he goes and the producer put this fake fish there but then we proceed to go into the shack and then the two chefs he's hanging out with they've got this picnic and they are pulling out all these amazing dishes french dishes i don't know the, remember the names of them but you're looking at it your mouth is dropping out of your face because you're just wow the food and they're on this picnic and having amazing wine and then the rest of the show is like that i highly recommend it watch if you don't watch any other anthony bourdain show just look up the quebec episode of parts unknown and you will be pleased because then you also see amazing scenery and this also made me think this this is what got me thinking about space and about the space stimulus about flatter tv tvs is that there was a time when we began the whole HD thing that uh, back in 2004, before I got married, a friend of mine got married in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I went to go visit him, go see the, the wedding, and he goes, hey, I've got this new HD TV. These are brand new. Nobody else has these. I got like one of the first ones, and there's only one channel showing any HD stuff. Do you remember that? Like 10 years ago, they weren't, there was no HD on TV. But when I watched this screen, my friend's TV, I was enthralled. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is better than any movie screen I've ever seen. The detail is breathtaking. And now fast forward to now, and you've got Anthony Bourdain totally taking advantage of this on his shows because they really show you the, the beauty of Quebec, of Ontario, of Toronto, of all the scenery in Canada is so beautiful. And the food, you get to see every like little nuance of the food they're eating. They go to this restaurant, all they have is maple themed foods because of all the maple syrup they make in Canada. And, and oh, it's like you're there. You're like, a, you're like sitting in this plate of maple everything. So I dreamt uh, that I was stuck in a huge vat of maple syrup. No, Mike, that actually happened. I was making my maple with me, and you got submerged. But you cleaned me off before I awoke. Yes, Mike, I did. Thank you. Don't mention it. Yeah. And don't dip me in maple syrup anymore is all I'm asking. I have more space. Yes, enjoy your space stimulus. More room to stretch. So that probably means we're a more limber nation. Oh, my God. The bottom of the charts. All right, we haven't done this in a while. What is the song that's at the very bottom of the charts? Florence and the Machine, What Kind of Man? I didn't even know this song was out. Wow. All right, the video is very Fifty Shades of Grey. New Florence and the Machine. Wow, what a surprise. Okay, there we go. The bottom of the charts. And it appears that Procter & Gamble is at the bottom of the charts lately. Why? Well, you know, P&G, Procter & Gamble, they are a major distributor of consumer goods. And their brands are 
Well, they're some of the most recognized in the world. They've got Bounty, Pampers, Duracell, Gillette. But they have gotten so big that they need to divest some of their diversity to streamline profits. And as such, they're selling some of their brands. This according to PiercePioneer.com. Actually, they're selling at least 100 of their least profitable brands. Their chief executive says, We get in trouble when we don't start with a consumer. And some of the time we get in trouble because we chase competitors. And some of the time we get in trouble because we chase whatever the latest thing is in the trade or with customers. And we have to stay single-mindedly focused on consumers. He says we have to understand the different consumer needs and wants. We have to nail it with the brand promise. And he says the businesses we're exiting are not bad businesses. Most simply, do not play to our strengths. Regarding the selected brands, they will discontinue, sell, or consolidate. He says, I hope in July we'll be able to turn all the cards over or most of the cards over. We have a lot of interest in the assets that we're going to ultimately dispose of, assuming we get the value creation we want. And I'm so glad I don't do a business podcast because that made no sense to me. But what do you think about all that? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. What do you think of Florence and the Machine's new album uh, and, and the Space Stimulus and Fifty Shades of Grey and Procter and Gamble's satanic logo? Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also, email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And check out the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, with links to where to listen to us on iTunes. You can subscribe to this show there and rate and comment on the show on iTunes. If you do that, more people find out about us. We're also on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn with the TuneIn app. Stitcher, the Stitcher app, Podomatic, Mixcloud, Spreaker, all those people have apps. And you can tell your friends about the show through Facebook, like the Facebook page that we have. And we, when I post a new show, share that with your friends and more people find out about us. It helps us out. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. Links to all those at mikesdailypodcast.com. And the Amazon link. If you need to buy anything on Amazon, go through that first. And that helps us out if you go through mikesdailypodcast.com first. And you can also find the blog Daily Podcast picture and all my past interviews at mikesdailypodcast.com. Speaking of interviews... Into an interview. I'm talking to Jason Hunter and Sarah Morgan of Great Highway. I don't know why I'm talking like this. (laughs) I just suddenly decided I'm going to sound like this for the rest of the show. So there we go. Uh, (laughs) You may choose whatever voice you would like to do for the rest of the show, Sarah and Jason. So we're talking on Skype. They are all the way over in Berkeley, which is probably like a 30 minute drive from here. So we're not that far away. Maybe next time we can be in person when we're interviewing. But tell me, what is it like doing? What's the San Francisco music scene like and the music scene here in the Bay Area for you guys? What's it seem like to you? Well, there's there are a lot of awesome bands. I mean, if you're here even for a short time playing gigs, it's like, it's really inspiring and overwhelming, like how many hundreds of bands there are that are doing similar stuff and really like kicking ass. And um, we're actually part of this really awesome group called Balanced Breakfast, which is a fairly new thing Um, It's a bunch of musicians and uh, members of the music community and industry that get together every week and discuss, you know, the challenges that we're facing as musicians and like how to do a better job at marketing ourselves. And it's really cool to see that kind of community springing up and everybody kind of joining together um, to have it be a team effort as opposed to a competition. Um, so we've noticed there's a lot of groups doing awesome things with electronic music, really fusing different styles. And that's exciting to feel like um, there's a lot to live up to that, you know, you can't just be good in San Francisco. You have to be great. And so it's, it's really good motivation for us. Ah, so you're like all, it's like a community and you're working together and, and it's, uh, everybody's sort of supporting each other. Yeah. And definitely that, I don't think that's always been the case. I mean, I've been in this scene for about four or five years and I would say a few years ago that wasn't, 
it felt more isolating um, as an individual band. And I think there are a lot of people moving in the scene trying to change that, uh, which is really great. And how did the name Great Highway come about? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. We basically named it after the... Uh, there's a road all the way on the west end of San Francisco called Great Highway. It's the last road in the city before the ocean. And, um, you know, we, we had a couple other names before Great Highway when we were first starting out. We were trying to come up with um, something that was that was short and catchy and also kind of iconic to the city because we really wanted to identify very strongly as a San Francisco-based band. I mean, that was our thing. So, um, you know... We picked a couple of park names and a couple other like landmarks, and nothing really rolled off the tongue as much as Great Highway. Um, and uh, incidentally, that ended up being very briefly the first place that we rehearsed. There was like a, a spot way out on 48th Avenue in like Balboa or something. There was a house that uh, we had a temporary bassist who lived there and had a big loft upstairs. Uh, and that was the first place when we were just kind of acoustic jamming that we would we would hang out. So, so it kind of fit um, the the intention of trying to name it after something that was like local and landmarky, um, a place that if you lived in San Francisco, you would know like oh Great Highway, that's that road out on the west end of town. But if you didn't live here, it's kind of like an inside joke, I guess. Right. I, what about I, the other names? That I want to know. Oh, man, man. <laughs> oh really? There are other names. Yeah, yeah. We were called Edge Hill for a while, which is a, a park um, out in like West Portal area. And God, you know, at, at like five minutes from now, I'll think of like five other things we have. <laughs> but I like, I like yeah. Great Highway. There's the the windmills. There's the bonfires. Yeah, there's it's a beautiful the, area. It's yeah, really nice town. The, it's windy. Yeah, it is windy. <laughs> You've got the Cliff House. Uh, yeah. The zoo, all kinds of stuff. Over, oh, it's a neat place. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, what is the appropriate attire to one of your concerts? Like, if I'm going to go like dance, should I wear mesh clothing? What should I? <laughs> you can wear anything you want. Preferably no clothing. It's yeah. Clothing <laughs> the more naked, the better. I say, right? Yeah. All right. Oh, we like to do that thing where we pretend like people are naked in the audience, but if you are naked, so much easier. For <laughs> Ah, uh, well, all right. That's good. That's uh, I can choose my birthday suit. That <laughs> very easy. Yeah, easy. <laughs> and, you know, when I think of male, female vocalist, uh, like dance bands, I, I think of like the Human League and the B-52s nice. and uh, Information Society, Lady, An wait, did I say Lady Antebellum? Uh Maybe not them. That's not a dance. <laughs> you can't really dance to them. <laughs> Animotion. Remember Animotion? You are an obsession. You're my obsession. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We should do that one. <laughs> yeah, we cover that. We'll cover any, any 80s too. Really? Yeah, pretty much. I want to know what you're <laughs> thinking. Yeah? Oh, I can't wait. I want to see a show. So tell me about gigs you got coming up. Um, so right now, the um, one gig we have on the calendar is actually out your, near your way um, at the Bistro in Hayward. Um, we'll be playing on Friday, April 3rd at, I believe, 9 p.m. Um, so that should be, that's actually our first gig with our new DJ, Meredith. So that should be really fun. I am so there. I am there. Yeah. I am there, there, there is where I am. And <laughs> right. So there. I have awesome. actually played the Bistro. I've been. I've played their open mic. Oh, that's awesome. On yeah, that, we've heard it's fun. On that old dusty piano they have. <laughs> oh, cool. I want to play Yeah. Oh, I that's a... We can, but... <laughs> There's uh there's like these uh trombones all hanging on the wall and trumpets and things and yeah it's a neat I love that place it's cool, yay so April third nine p.m. in Hayward, um, yeah. and a, a, any other projects you guys doing anything else? We're doing this other thing that um, is very new. We are actually doing a series of YouTube videos where we show off how we can sing harmonies. Um, so we actually have all four of us can sing harmonies. So we have a four part harmony right now, two guys, two girls. So we've been um, picking 
really cheesy pop songs that we love and doing <laughs> like 30 seconds of harmony on them. And so we just released us singing the, the song from the Lego movie, Everything is Awesome. Um, you can see that on our website and it's really cute. And we're going to hopefully do a lot of, of fun, like cheesy songs. Um, yeah. So we recommend checking that one out. And, and what is your website again? Um, TakeGreatHighway.com Take Great Highway? Uh-huh. TakeGreatHighway.com And you can find the YouTube channel through that. And they can buy music on there. Yeah. You can find our iTunes links and Bandcamp links there as well. And Facebook. And Facebook and Twitter and all the good stuff. Yay. All right. So it's Great Highway, Sarah Morgan and Jason Hunter. Ooh, let's play Moving Target. Uh yeah. A lot of interesting changes in the song, music changes. It's very 80s sounding to me. Jason singing on this with Sarah. How did this come about? Um, this is another one of mine, but this was a pretty cool one because I actually wrote this song five years ago and I tried to play it with other musicians and it never t took off and I knew it was a winner and I was sad that I might have to like let it die. Until I came to Great Highway and I gave it to Jason and he turned around a, a beautiful demo for me and I was like, that's what it sounded like in my head. <laughs> and I was really happy and that's when I knew I was in the right band. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Jason, I guess Jason can talk a little bit about the production. He did a really amazing job. Most of the arrangement on, on this is from him. And it's why it sounds so cool. Well, she had she had a demo of it from her last her last from, from an old band, and it was kind of this. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but it had this sort of jazzy rock kind of feel to it. Um, it wasn't as uh, it just wasn't as coherent. It sort of sounded like four different people had brought in their own musical influence, and it just sort of clashed together to make a soup. And I, I just wanted to produce something that was a little cleaner and a little more. Uh, emphasizing Sarah because you know it really had again it had this kind of powerhouse vocal and this really really catchy melody so I wanted it to be more um, you know synth instrumentation supporting a really strong vocal and then put in some some cool harmonies underneath it ah it comes off great it sounds great and and is uh, Sean McAllister playing guitar on this he is yes and that nice crunchy guitar that's him rocking it <laughs> wow well i can't wait to see you guys and dj meredith all playing together at hayward's april 3rd bistro the bistro there at 9 p.m and check them out online take greathighway.com and sarah and jason thanks for being on mike's daily podcast thanks for having us yeah
Moving target by Great Highway as we go outside of the last place on earth. We're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Thank you again to Great Highway for being on the show. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is a drawing with me and the brewmaster. Mac, do we talk about when I slipped you into a bunch of maple syrup in your sleep and almost killed you? No, brewmaster. We discussed taxes and procrastinating and how actually... Me working on this podcast right now is helping me to procrastinate. And I do a little, I have a little saying on the drawing that is a a bit of an ode to Douglas Adams. Who's he? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. I see Benita and the disgruntled fiddle player are nowhere to be seen. They went home. They had to get busy. Right. Next show. It's going to be the return of the much-loved feature called Wow Shuts Wow, where we have some wowing, surprising information, recent news stories that we will bring to you. Plus, we will hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.